The world has realized that we must create energy as responsibly as possible. Unfortunately, intermittency is one main impediment to producing energy from renewable sources. Can renewable energy be created anytime it is needed? Wind and solar power cannot respond positively to that question. Nevertheless, a groundbreaking energy production technique has been developed that precisely resolves the intermittent nature of wind and solar energy. Tidal energy is this groundbreaking innovation that is enthusing many companies in the energy industry. What is tidal energy, how does it function, and what advantages does it have? Excellent energy production methods include wind and solar energy. Unlike fossil fuel-based generating stations that emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, these are inexpensive and do not contribute to pollution. Additionally, we will have wind and solar energy very soon, at least not in a billion years. Even though wind and solar power are fantastic, they have significant disadvantages. Environmental seasonal and daily cycles may impact them, reducing their utility or effectiveness. As a result, renewable energy can not always reliably generate electricity throughout the day. For example, you cannot generate solar energy after the sun has set. This is known as intermittency. Intermittency is a crucial source of concern for energy experts. For example, peak solar and wind farm energy output in Europe has been reported to range between 0 and 23 and 24 gigatons of energy, respectively. These peak production periods generate significant energy, although unexpected lows sometimes occur. Compare this intermittency to the continuous power production created by fossil fuel-based power plants employing coal or natural gas, and you will see renewable energy's Achilles heel. Energy production businesses attempt to address this innate flaw with battery solutions, but this merely creates new problems. This is where tidal energy comes in, as you will see later. Since it is renewable energy, no harm is done to the environment. In addition, it can eliminate the intermittent nature of wind and solar energy by being accessible 24-7. However, what is tidal energy and how does it work? The forces that causes tides are known as tidal constituents. For example, the Earth's rotation is a tidal constituent, but the Moon's gravitational force acting on the Earth is the major tidal constituent. The greater the gravitational forces between objects, the greater the pull between them. Which is why, despite being significantly smaller, the Moon exerts more pull on the Earth than the Sun. So the Moon constantly pulls on the Earth, including land surfaces. However, land surfaces only move a little because they are not very flexible. They move no more than 55 centimeters per day. However, the pull is more dramatic in the ocean because water is liquid and can respond to gravity more readily. The Moon pulls on the side facing it and the opposite side of the Earth. The most significant force is felt on the side closest to the Moon. The gravitational force is zero at the Earth's center. As the Earth continues to spin, high and low tides become more accurate, and tidal energy engineers take advantage of this phenomenon. But how do they do this, or how does tidal energy work? The main trick is to convert the kinetic energy generated by the rise and fall of ocean tides and currents, also known as tidal flows, into electricity. More power can be produced when greater the tidal range or the difference in height between high and low tides. Regarding tidal projects, there are three types to choose from. The first is the tidal turbine, which is relatively simple. It is very similar to wind turbines except that it is placed below the water surface rather than above or on land. So the water's current pushes the turbine's blades, which are connected to a generator, and bam, you have generated electricity. Tidal turbines can generate far more electricity than wind turbines because water is denser than air, allowing the blades to move much faster. However, because of the same water's high density, tidal turbines must be much stronger than wind turbines, making them more expensive to manufacture. Tidal turbines are large, but they have the advantage of causing little disruption to the environment. They may cause collision damage with marine life, similar to wind turbines, but this isn't a major concern due to the slow speeds of the blades. The tidal barrage is the second type of tidal power project. Tidal barrages are low-walled dams that are built at tidal inlets or estuaries. They are similar to standard hydroelectric dams in that sluice gates form a reservoir on one side of the barrage. The barrages are attached to the seafloor with the top of the barrage just slightly above the water level at high tide. 
You then position your tidal turbines near the bottom of the barrage within a tunnel that allows water to pass through. The turbines turn with the tides both incoming and outgoing. During an incoming high tide, water flows over the turbines as the water rises, then back through the turbines as the water falls. The turbines are linked to a generator that produces electricity. Tidal barrages are the most efficient method of capturing tidal energy, but are also the most expensive. Engineers must build an entire concrete structure which increases development cost. Furthermore, barrages negatively impact the surrounding ecosystem more than tidal fences or turbines. You're constructing an underwater wall that prevents fish and other sea creatures from passing through, which has many consequences for the local ecosystem. The tidal fence, a hybrid of tidal barrages and tidal turbines, is the final type of tidal energy project. The vertical tidal fence turnstile are arranged in what appears to be a fence, hence called tidal fence. Tidal fences generate electricity by using the energy from tidal currents to spin the turnstile blades which are connected to a generator rather than a propeller. Tidal fences are similar to tidal barrages in that they have vertical blades that are pushed by moving water and are installed together like a fence. But they do not require the large concrete structure that tidal barrages do. They are typically installed between land masses and inlets and fast-moving streams. They are completely submerged underwater and have little impact on the surrounding ecosystem. So how do engineers determine whether a location is appropriate for a tidal energy project? Although two-thirds of the world's surface is covered by water, not all countries or places on the planet are eligible for tidal power projects owing to the particular criteria. For instance, the project would only be feasible if the gap between flood and high tide was 4.6 meters or higher. It also matters how much water moves during a tide or the caliber of the tidal flow. Let's presume your favorite location is somewhere where the tide may go up and down. 10 meters, but there is just a tiny amount of water there. So there isn't even enough energy to spin the blades. Finding a mechanism to safeguard your tidal plant or finding a different location is necessary since wave actions and storms may be harmful. Otherwise, you risk spending much of your cash building a barrier. The economic cycle of the area will be disrupted if your location interferes with the flow of regular maritime traffic to the estuary. There is also the silt index of water to manufacturers. Nonetheless, appropriate sites for tidal energy projects are incredibly likely. It's important to note that the original tidal projects termed tide mills were used by our ancestors to grind grain rather than to produce energy. In 1965, the branch estuary in France saw the construction of the first contemporary tidal plant to produce power. It was constructed on a large scale and used 24 turbo generators. The plant still generates electricity from the difference between high and low tides, up to 600 gigawatt hours annually, demonstrating the durability of tidal power projects. More than 50,000 American homes could be powered for an entire year by the energy from this station. In 1982, the second commercial-scale tidal barrage was built in Nova Scotia to demonstrate the functionality of the Swiss innovation Straflow turbine. Despite its initial troubles, the facility is producing power without concerns. The biggest tidal power plant is now running on South Korea's Siwa Lake. It was built to provide reclaimed land for the nearby metropolitan area, reduce flooding, and secure irrigation water by converting the coastal reservoir to fresh water using a 12.7 kilometer long sea wall. It has an installed capacity of 254 megawatts, but it is more than just a power generating plant. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Do you think tidal energy is 10 times better than wind and solar power? Is it the future wave of producing renewable energy? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.